Welcome to Idagonia. Uh, today I want to kind of take you out on my uh, Tiger 900 Rally Pro. Give you an idea of, of what I think of it as an owner for about seven months. You know, I ride about 50% on-road, 50% off-road, and I think the bike's built, you know, just for somebody like me. So I'm gonna go right around, give you my thoughts, uh, and let you know how it feels. Starting out here in English Point in Hayden, Idaho. So for things first about this motorcycle, uh, let me just start out by saying it's a great bike. It, it really is. You know, I'm very impressed with the motor, the suspension, and the whole setup. You know, I'll kind of go through each item as we go along and discuss it, as well as get into some off-road a little bit. But to start with, you know, let's just pop on the cruise control here. Simple down, set at 51, okay. So my first tidbit does have to do with the speedometer. You know, as you see, the cruise control is set at 51, which is great. Uh, but if you look at the GPS, it says 48. Now, the GPS is accurate. Uh, the Tiger speedometer is off by about 9% uh, across the range in reality. You know, if you're going 25, uh, it will show 27 or so. Slow down here to 35. The second point that I really love about the bike uh, is the quick shifter. Uh, you know, the up and the down is so smooth. It's quick. You know, if I give it some gas here, then go up to fifth and sixth, you can just see a pull, then hard on the brakes, down shifting. You know, you, you really feel it, just how smooth it is. It's such a smooth bike, smooth transmission and the quick shifter really shows that. Of course, you know, traditional shifts, they also work well. So we go up to fifth on a traditional shift. You know, the clutch pull is nice and light. You can go down as well. Very light, the engagement point is very smooth. You know, you don't have to worry too much about uh, stalling it. I think I've only stalled the bike about one time, in actuality, uh, about a thousand miles or so on it. Even in corners, you saw me downshift there, no problem with the quick shifter. Now the suspension, this road's, you know, it has some curves. It's not a sport bike. I'm not gonna treat it like a sport bike, but the suspension on the road is, is really nice. You know, it's a pretty plush bike. Just went through a dip there and you know, you, you feel it, but it's, it's smooth. The only part where I think it's a little lacking, and, and that just kind of comes with the territory, is if you really want to push it. You know, if you really want to push it on these corners and, and, and get leaned over, uh, you're going to lose some feeling and it, that make corner bounce. Um, you know, that, that's nothing wrong with the bike. The suspension is great. It's just something you have to be aware of. You know, this isn't a sport bike. Don't treat it as one. Uh, that being said, it is. It's fairly sporty. Some beautiful corners here. Now, along with the suspension, you know, one item that, that really kind of shows is, is the brakes. I'm gonna downshift here and just come on the brakes fairly hard. You know, those brakes, the Brembo brakes, you know, they put them on sports bikes and there's a good reason. They have a lot of feel. They obviously brake very well. Uh, but for me, you know, the feel is the most important, and these brakes give you tons of feel. And what I really like about the brakes, too, is, you know, off-road, they work very well. So especially when you get into off-road scenarios, if it gets muddy, you know, you want to lock up that rear brake. Uh, that's where this bike really shines, I feel, with those Brembos. 
it's just you get a lot of feel when it locks up you know you're not getting kicked too hard um, you definitely know when the when the brakes are engaged when they're locked and, and when they're about to be uh, on the rear you know the front you can disable the traction control off-road with the rally I believe it's off-road pro mode I personally don't see the point um, I can't outbreak ABS uh, especially on gravel um, so I, I really never go in that mode um, you know you can still get the tire out you can still do all those things quite well just something to keep in mind you know another great point is this motor so if we pull here you know a little pull in second and third gear that 900 she rips I mean she really does again it's not a sport bike you know they don't treat it as one but for an adventure bike you know she she really does pull so I mentioned in the start uh, we're in Hayden Lake Idaho about to head to the Hayden Lake shooting range and, and kind of head around the woods there uh, to get on some fire roads you know some forest service roads uh, and give you an idea of what's that what's that is like Make sure no cars are coming if you want you can follow along the GPS I'll link the GPS tracks if you happen to find yourself up here you like to ride this route So I haven't been back here yet this year. It might be a little bit muddy, um, but we're gonna find out. All right, so let's do some off-road riding here. Let's get in the dirt. One thing that I don't like about this bike is you can't change into the off-road modes um, on the fly. So it's simple enough, you click on mode, you can go through there's road there's sport which gives you a little bit more sport map off-road off-road pro and rider and of course rain uh, you know i'm just going to go into off-road and as you can see it's the off-road map etc um, off-road pro everything is off so go on the off-road here just hit okay uh, it's telling you it's disabled okay you know and you have to stop every time you do that when you're riding you can go back uh, to the modes of traction control on the fly so if I go from off-road to road mode, let's say, oh, let me do it. You just close the throttle and we go into that mode. Or if I'm on the road and want to go from uh, road to rain mode, uh, that's not a problem either. It's just going from the non-traction control modes um, from the traction control modes. That's, that's the biggest issue. So let's get some off-road riding. You know, I kind of chose this track because it really kind of showcases how I ride the bike. Um, about 50% on-road, 50% off-road. I'm going to soak up these here. Got some dogs coming in. Ooh, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly common occurrence in North Idaho, run to some dogs. An occasional car, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Maybe he'll let me buy. Hopefully he does. Yeah, he is. Thank you. So welcome to the Coeur d'Alene National Forest. Very pretty back here at all times. Winter, summer, fall. You know, these trees are just wonderful, but you know, this really highlights what the bike is good at. But, you know, talking about the suspension on road, it's it's great. Watch out for that butterfly. Uh, but you know, off-road, I find it even better. It is adjustable, 
and I, I've played it for a little bit and I've actually just gone back to the manufacturer settings you know I'm about 510 or about 180 centimeters um, weigh about 170 pounds that's what about uh, 80 kilos or so 75 80 kilos and you know I find this just absolutely perfect for me almost built for me in that regard The suspension sounded well. There's a lot of potholes and it's just going right through them. As you can see here. Ooh. And if you really want to, you know, open it up. The bike does go. I mean, you, you put your hand into it, it takes off, especially in second gear, which I think it's about ideal for, you know, off-road scenarios like this. You can use the quick shifter off to see them in first and they're second, didn't use the clutch. When you're in off-road pro or off-road mode, it does work well. Um, I, I do hit the occasional false neutral. Letting me pass. Thank you. You know, third gear is pretty good off-road too. Once you get into a little bit more flowy road, less potholes. This road typically would be perfect for it, but you know that, that wetness. Ooh. Decent sized bump. It's contrasting elements make it a little bit hard to see, but you know, that's one thing this bike gives you a lot of confidence both on road and off you know it's it's definitely on the tires the stock tires they're meant for on road let's just be honest you might be able to do a road like this but you know i wouldn't be pushing it by any means see hayden creek down there uh, but you know i i've added uh i forgot what i what they're called but they're a great 50 50 tire i believe them Rail Max Missions. I'll put a link in the description, but they're a great tire if you're interested in a 50 50 tire. If you ride on roads like this, you know, the front gives you a lot of confidence. The front tire there, the rear tire as well, it just gives you a ton of confidence. You know, it hooks up really nicely, almost surprisingly nice, almost too well in some cases when you want that little slip. Uh, but you know, that's, that's a nice problem to have if you have tons of traction. So you know just just keep that in mind but overall it's you know great tires once you get off the stock ones based on the size too the prices aren't too bad in comparison to others especially you know more sport bike tires or road tires even you know since we are off-road and there is the potential of me dropping it uh, let's talk about crash protection. So, from the factory, the Rally Pro's crash protection is non-existent. Uh, let's put it that way. You know, there is a, a skid plate on it. It's just, uh, you know, it's not a skid plate. It's basically just protecting the bike from rock chips. Um, if you hit anything even mildly large, it's going to go right through it or bend it some mud here here's the the Hayden Creek shooting range nobody's shooting today surprisingly but yeah the, the stock cross protection like I said it's just not existent uh, that's one of the first things I did is I added a, a skid plate and some side guards um, both from SW Motec yeah, and they're they're pretty good there's there's a lot of issues with how 
protection attaches to the bike you know it typically mounts directly to the engine which is an issue and that's understandable um, you know there has been cases of bolt shearing off in the engine block and that's just something you don't want to experience i mean there there's no benefit there um, if you're shearing bolts off in the engine um, you know you're better off just running with the stock guards but uh, so far i've been quite happy with the sw motec i haven't heard anybody shearing bolts off with it obviously get your torque specs right uh, but but outside of that no it's it's pretty good nice of them let me through all right let's take a left here And if you want to get the back out, you definitely can. If you want to skid the back tire, you can do that as well. You know, these brakes just give you tons of confidence. The engine does too. Watch out for those holes, that's a good flat tire. And one thing about this bike, you know, once you get off-road, I've ridden dirt bikes all my life, you know, starting off with a little Honda 80 and, and moving out the range. Uh, and this bike, it, it does feel like a 900cc dirt bike. It's definitely on the heavier side, but, you know, it, it has the power, it has the suspension to really get you out of anything that you're going to get into. Uh, and not only that, you know, it gives you the confidence in that suspension. That, that's a huge thing. And the brakes as well. You know, it gives you the ability to, you know, hit 40 on these roads with ease and, and still come to a stop. Not only that, but steering with your feet is quite easy. I do use the stock pegs and I, I find they're great. Not only that, but sitting down off-road too, obviously you're not going to go as fast, that's understandable. Get a little bug off the windscreen. But really, you know, it, it feels nice off-road. The suspension is pretty plush. Um, you know, you're, you're definitely going to feel everything, but that's what you want. It just gives you enough where it's comfortable, it's not hard. You have enough to have solid control. I um, mean, it gives you confidence. I mean, what else do you want in a motorcycle, in my mind? You want confidence, you want solid control, you want um, really the ability to, to do what you want, and this bike gives it. Tires too definitely help. I think a good question is, how does this bike compare to other bikes that are meant for off-road, especially in this class? Well, I haven't ridden a lot, but I have had a F800 GS, and I, I have a pretty good idea of how that feels off-road. I didn't have the same tires. I had the Heidenau K60s, I believe, or K70s. Great tires for off-road. I really enjoyed them. The Dunlap Trail Max Missions are, are definitely better, but... You know, the F800 is, it's two cylinders. It's much more of a tractor. Obviously, it's its not much of a tractor compared to the 1200 GS with that boxer engine, but 
Uh, it is a tractor in comparison to this. You know, this, with that triple, you know, plenty of power, exactly what you need. Riding dirt bikes. But it's not gonna pull you out of everything. You know, if you're in, in too low of a gear and you're looking for power, this bike isn't gonna have it for you. Um, you know, just, just something to keep in mind. That being said, if you if you open it up, she opens up. You know, it, it really likes that mid range, and and that's where that mid range. You know, what I like in off road bikes, in on road, honestly. You know, you want a strong mid range, and and I think that triple with the T pain crank does offer that strong mid range. And sitting down over these bumps, really no issue. We'll do some standing here though. these long sweeping corners. You know, to that accord, you don't get a lot of engine braking on this motorcycle. Uh, just because it is a little bit higher revving, you know, I, I don't feel it as much as I did on a twin, or sorry, on the on the F800. Um, you know, it's just not quite there in comparison. There's some, of course, you know, it's still a motorcycle, it's still a larger CC bike. You're going to have engine braking, but, you know, it's not at the level of, of others. And that's something, you know, just to keep in mind as you go along, of, you're going to be relying much more on the brakes. Pop it out here of the forest into a farm. Try to get out of that person's dust a little bit. But if you compare this bike to like, you know, the KTM 890 off-road, the KTM is gonna do better. You know, that, that's definitely designed to go off-road much more than this is. However, you compare it to the current, what? I think it's the, the BMW F850. You know, that's that's definitely much more on-road biased and, and you're gonna see that. You know, it's, it's definitely gonna come out. Wait, let me buy a nice to him. So I'd say, you know, this bike's a, a nice, happy medium. It really is. Um, like I said, I do 50-50 riding on a lot of roads like this. Maybe not quite like this, I'll run it out, but, you know, generally speaking, roads like this. And, you know, this bike is perfect for me. Uh, I, I really can't express that enough. I'm very happy with it. I can only think of, a, you know, a few things. The standard protection, you know, that's just not there. Um, that's okay, you know, I, I can understand that most of the people buy these bikes when, you know, maybe see a road like this, but probably not much harder. Uh, 
Another niggle, of course, is the speedometer being off. It's not a big issue once you realize it, but you know, you pay 15,000 plus for a motorcycle, you expect the speedometer to be pretty accurate. <laughs> and unfortunately, it's just not. So, you know, something you gotta be aware of. Obviously changing the modes, I said, going from road mode to off-road. This is a great scenario of the other. So if I hit mode, and I can go over, maybe. Oh, that's interesting. I have done it before. I wonder why it won't let me do it now, but I have been able to change modes on the fly. Uh, I wonder if that's just from the standard riding mode, but uh, you know, that would, that would be nice in this scenario. I know it's an off-road. I know it's going to let my tires slip a bit. Um, you know, you just go in with that mindset and you'll be fine. Uh, but still something to pay attention to. You know, you, once you get back on the pavement, uh, you want a pavement road or you want a pavement mode uh, and having the ability to swap to it, you know, that would be nice. I'll stop up here really quick. I do like the, the flashers on the side. All right, so come to a stop. Yeah, you see them unlocked there. Road mode selected. No cars behind. Yeah, those flashers are pretty nice, easy to access. The cruise control is pretty nice as well. I really enjoy that. Obviously the heated grips are great. Um, heated seat as well is, is very nice. You know, I don't really ride a papillion, um, but you know, from what I've read from others, it's, it's fairly comfortable. You know, it's not kind of gold wing comfort, of course, but for what the bike is, it's comfortable. I have run with panniers, uh, it, it handles it fine, you know, the, the engine power is more than enough for, for panniers. Hopefully that answered some of your questions about the bike. You know, I've, I've owned it for about a year now. Not too many miles, but I do have other motorcycles I ride. But from what I've ridden, I've been very impressed with the bike. Triumph really nailed it. You know, every bike's going to have its downfalls, and this bike has them, of course. But they are very few and far between. You know, they, they really are. leave this video here uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave me a comment or send me a message happy to answer uh, hopefully this give you a little bit better understanding of what the bike can do how I typically ride it uh, and what I do with the bike you know feel free to like and, and subscribe you know I'm sure I'll have another video out at some point probably going more into the bike if not uh, my speed twin as well All right, well, thank you for watching.